Hello there to all my students. In this video, we are going to quickly talk about a very simple topic when it comes to learning about the fundamental unit of life that is understanding the cell wall, its structure and function. My name is Aishwarya and I welcome you to Baiju's 9th and 10th grade channel where we make concepts super duper easy for all of you with the best visualization. So what are we going to be learning in this particular video? We are going to be learning about the structure of cell wall, its importance, its function and we're going to talk about a very important and a very special process that is plasmolysis and we're going to address a very important question as well. Where all do we find this particular aspect which is cell wall? Now before I start talking to you directly about cell wall, when we talk about a cell, so let's take plant cell for an example. We know that the three main components that are there in the plant cell includes the cell membrane. We know that it includes the cytoplasm. And of course, we know that it includes the nucleus. And we know that all cells that, have the, uh, that are there have these three components in it. But there are some cells which also have some additional structures to it. So in the case of plant cells, Apart from a cell membrane, we observe that it has an additional covering or an additional boundary around it, which we call as a cell wall. So just like how houses tend to have a fence around them, we see that plant cells here have an additional structure which is called as a cell wall. Now how is a cell wall different from that of a cell membrane? So first and foremost, we know that when we talk about the cell membrane, we know that the cell membrane that is there, so I'm just going to write this down. We know that the cell membrane that is there is a selectively permeable membrane. And we also know that the select, uh, cell membrane that is there is made up of phospholipids. And there is a phospholipid bilayer which is associated with it. While on the other hand, when we talk about the cell wall, first and foremost, we see that the cell wall that is there in the case of plants is the outermost covering. So first we will find cell wall and then we will find cell membrane. And in the case of cell wall, we see that cell wall that is there, there is freely permeable, which means that it will allow all substances to pass through it. And along with that, when we talk about what cell wall is made of, we see that in the case of plants, it is made up of cellulose fibers. Now, what do I mean by cellulose fibers? Cellulose fibers are nothing but long threads of cellulose which are there. And if I actually go into the details of this, right, and I pull it out thread by thread, we see that at the end of it, we see that it constitutes of a chain of molecules that you see right here. And at the end of the day, we see that cellulose is nothing but a type of carbohydrate. And we see that it is a complex sugar molecule, which is nothing but a polymer of glucose molecules. That means that cellulose at the end of the day is made of repetitive units. Polymer is nothing but repet made of repetitive units of sugar molecules, specifically glucose molecules, arranged in a certain manner and a certain structure. So in the case of plant cells, what is the cell wall made up of? It is made up of cellulose. But why is it that we observe cell wall only in plants? Why not in animals? Or why do animal cells lack a cell wall? Now this right here is a very important question to address and you can get this kind of a question even for one or two marks for give reason. Now first and foremost, we know that animals in general have the inherent ability to move around. They are not stationary or fixed to the ground and they have the ability to protect themselves by locomotion. While on the other hand, in the case of plants, we see that plants are fixed to the ground and they are stationary and they don't have the ability to move around and protect themselves, which is why they require an additional protective layer or an additional layer of rigidity and support. And that is where your cell wall comes into the picture. So primarily we see that the cell wall here provides mechanical and structural strength. It provides rigidity to the cell and of course protects it from environmental challenges. So primary function of the cell wall of course is to provide protection for these plant cells. Now from here I would like to deviate and make an observation. Have you noticed that probably if you have a plant at home or you know if you would have noticed maybe your plants in your school if it goes along without water for a long period of time we see that the plants become kind of droopy and they get wilted right so what exactly happens when you don't regularly water plants why is it that they wilt like this and does the cell wall have anything to do with this 
Now what really happens is that when there's not enough water available or if water moves out of plant cells, we see that the cellular content will shrink. Right, so which means that we know by the process of exosmosis, we know that water will move from inside of the cell and it will move outside and as a res result, we know that the cell will shrink. Yes, so we are awa aware of this particular phenomenon. But in the case of plants, what really happens is that it's slightly different. It leads to a process called as plasmolysis or a phenomenon known as plasmolysis. Now, what do we mean by plasmolysis? Now, normally in the case of animal cells or maybe if you take any other cells, what happens is that the whole cell will shrink here. But in the case of plant cells, because they have a cell wall, what really happens is that the cell wall remains intact. But the remaining cellular content that is there will shrink drastically leading to a lot of empty space or blank space which is created as a result of all the water moving out and things getting shrunk, right? So here this kind of cell is what we call as a plasmolyzed cell and the shrinking of all the protoplasm content, right, as a result of ex exosmosis is what we call as plasmolysis. So every time you hear the word plasmolysis cell or plasmolysis, always think about the plant cells that are there. It will give you an easier understanding. Now, of course, when we talk about cell wall, and I've constantly been referring to plant cells, right? But does this mean that only plants have cell wall and no other organism has cell wall? As a matter of fact, no. There are various organisms which do have a cell wall. Like, for example, we have bacteria. But it's just that the composition of cell wall is quite different when it comes to plants. Now, in the case of plants, we observe that it's made up of cellulose. But in the case of bacteria, it is made up of complex polysaccharides and it's made up of an intricate network of complex polysaccharides. While on the other hand, if we take fungi, we see that the cell wall in fungi is made up of chitin. But the functions that a cell wall serves, whether it's in a plant cell, in a bacteria or in a fungi at the end of the day, is to protect the cell from all kinds of adversities. So there you go, in just under 5 minutes we've covered all the concepts which are related to cell wall. Now of course if you are very new to this channel and this is the first video that you have encountered, we regularly have classes for all of you. This is the timetable that we follow on our channel for your better understanding. And of course before I wind up, here's a quick homework for all of you. And this is a kind of question that will definitely come in your examination. And that is to state the differences between cell wall and cell membrane. And here specifically I have asked you only for two different you can let me know in the comments of this video because you know that I'm definitely going to check your answers. And as you always know, Baiju's 9th and 10th has always got you covered. So if you like this video, do not forget to hit the subscribe button because truly we will take care of your education and your academic outcomes that are there. We will be helping you throughout from end to end, making you exam ready. And if you like how we teach and the way we talk about, your, uh, you know, the way we take care of you, do not forget to hit the like button and of course share this video with your friends. I will be seeing all you all soon, but up until then, everybody, take care, lots of love, and bye-bye.